Hiya once again, Tim with Tim's Computer Repair. Hey, have you ever been suspecting that your water-cooled processor might be overheating? You know, an overheating processor can cause many things. It could cause blue screens, crashing, sluggishness, you know, PC powering off for no reason, and in some cases it could cause damage to your computer. But a really easy way to check if your computer is overheating without going into Windows is to go into what's called the BIOS. Now this is common knowledge for most PC you know, users or, or, or custom builders, but in case you don't know, a really quick and easy way to determine if your processor is overheating is to just power it on, first plug it in, once it's powered on you want to immediately start pressing the delete key. Now if you could hear that noise I automatically know that there's a problem with this computer. But we're going into the BIOS here. Pressing delete like that will get you into the BIOS. And you want to go to a setting somewhere in here that has to do with monitoring your processor's temperatures. Uh, that will be in a few different places. Might be on the main screen. In this case this is on the monitor. And you want to look at your CPU temperatures and watch them for a little while and see if they start climbing. All right, in this case, this is climbing, okay? How high should it get? Well, I can tell you now, if you start pushing 70C, you have an overheating problem. This is just sitting here in the BIOS and it's steadily climbing. So it definitely says that there's a an overheating problem with this processor and as you can see it's going to easily get up into the 70s and we really don't want it to get much higher than that the fans now are starting to rev up because it senses that it is heating up so to save the processor we're going to go ahead and just shut it down and the noise we were hearing pretty much is coming from this water cooler so once again I have a computer in my shop that has a failing water cooler. Been getting them in quite often. We're going to go ahead. How do you correct this problem? Well, you could go through all the hassle of putting another water cooler in here. You know, this computer he has an i7-3700X. So I'm going to put a high-end air cooler in here and just do away with this water cooler. I'm not a big fan of water cooling, even though I have one myself. But for these kinds of reasons, and I get them in my shop a lot, just look back at a lot of my videos, they have issues. And you can't tell that they have issues until your computer starts crashing, blue screening, shutting down, who knows, God knows what else, you know, or even damage. But uh, anyway, they are nice looking, those water coolers are. So that's the main reason why I think everybody uses them. They do provide a bit more cooling capabilities than, than the air coolers, but the air coolers, a high-end air cooler is comparable to a, you know, a closed-loop water cool system. So anyways, let's just go quickly go through the process of swapping this out. We're going to go ahead and take off this, um, this, this water block here. Okay. There's that, and this pretty much comes off. And you can see, oh yeah, the nice dried up thermal paste there. Lovely, nice, nice dried up. That looks good. Pretty much these are these stock brackets that come with the AMD motherboard. What is on the other side, on the back side of this board is of course your stock AMD uh, backplate. That's what's under there. We know that for a fact. All AMD uh, builds have that on the back of the on the back of the stock brackets. There is that heatsink. So we won't worry about that right now. But now that I have this loose, we can go ahead and start taking the screws out from the back side of this radiator. So it's this kind of a sandwich push pull. You have a fan here, then you have the radiator, then you have a fan here, and this fan is pushing air out through the radiator and this fan is pushing out out of the back. Let's go ahead and remove the screws off from the back side of this fan which is back here along the back side of the case.
Those are out. The radiator is loose. And oh, I see. What do I see here? The radiator. No, it's this fan. Okay, so this fan has a cable coming out of it going to the back. I'm going to have to take this off also. No big deal. I'll take this fan off. This is the fan, by the way, that we want to keep to mount on the exhaust part of the case here. So it's going to, with some fan screws. And there's that. Now this is loose. This can come out. Okay, we got to figure out where. Oh, wow. Ah, okay, I see. Sometimes the pump is built into the water block. And I thought maybe that's what that plug was along with the RGB. It looks like that's just the RGB because the pump is actually here and that's what's making all the noise so let me um, i'm gonna have to let's see do, 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 do. i'm gonna have to open the back of this case up and have a look at where all these cables go so we can get them disconnected It looks like that the radiator is just plugged into the motherboard on, on the side I'm looking at, at the um, AIO pump fan header. So I'm going to just disconnect that now. So basically what that allowed me to do was just remove the pump and the radiator. Yep. And that, and this one cable coming from it just went to the uh, AIO pump fan header. So what I'm seeing now is the one RGB fan we're trying to keep and the other fan, the two fans that I was previously showing you uh, run into probably uh, what is the fan controller. This is the RGB controller looks like. Uh, that looks like the fan controller really but they're all run into here. Uh, so we're gonna have to take this off just to see how this is routed. Lovely. This is this is getting really fun. Okay. These are the two running that runs through the two fans. All they do is come in, loop around, and come back to the fan controller. That's all they do. So we're gonna have to snip uh, at least this guy off, probably all of these and find out which one of these uh, go to. I need more slack too. So I need to eliminate one. So we'll just have to snip these and rewire them or whatever once I'm done here. I need some more slack on the RGB fan so it'll reach the back of the case. These are the two I'm looking at. And it's still, they, they come in and are zip tied here. Got to be really careful not to snip the fan cables. There you go. Just like that. I have now removed the black fan. The black fan was just running down onto the front of the board connected to a fan header on the board. So we'll keep that out. All of that's okay. There's the back plate that I had talked about. Just raise that up. Keep that like that. All right, and as you can see now, my RGB fan has enough length now to be mounted as my exhaust. And that's what we're gonna do. So we'll get that mounted. There we go. Fan is mounted. All right, we're just gonna go ahead and remove these brackets. The back plate has now dropped through the bottom. So we'll just lift up here. Just gonna go ahead and use a little bit of tape. This is masking tape painter's tape, whatever you want to call it. This will not leave any residue on the electronics. That's to hold the back plate in place while we lay it back down. All right, we got those on there. Looking good. Tighten them down. 
There we go. So I'm going to clean up our processor a little bit here. All right, got that all cleaned up. Thermal paste. Okay, that's mounted. Now I'm gonna put the fan on. There we go. Let's plug that in and see what we got. Air cooler is installed. Now let's check temps. Okay, everyone, cooler is installed. PC is powered on. Let's take a quick look at the temps in the BIOS. CPU temps. Ah, nice. Steady 38, it just got 38. It was sitting at 37 for quite some time. And it is just sitting there nice and cool. Now we don't have to worry about a water cooler that may not be functioning, that may be causing your computer to overheat. We know for a fact that there's not gonna be an issue with this air cooler. Fairly comparable to a single rad water cooler for sure. There you have it. An easy way to check to see if your water cooler is malfunctioning without booting into Windows. I am Tim with Tim's Computer Repair. See you soon.